I'm Carrie Pallardy with Becker's Healthcare. The program will begin with a presentation, and we will have a question and answer session following completion of the presentation. You can submit any questions you have throughout the presentation by typing them into your control panel in the space labeled enter, to qu enter a question for staff and clicking send. Our presenters will attempt to answer as many questions as they can during the time we have, and will follow up on questions they do not have the opportunity to address. You will receive an email within about a week following the webinar that will include instructions for how you can download a copy of the presentation. You will also receive a follow-up email shortly after completion of the program. You could submit your feedback or any additional questions at that time. This email will not include the presentation. It is now my pleasure to introduce today's presenters. Gareth Hall is the Director of Worldwide Health for Microsoft Corporation. Having run a large IT, IT team in the UK National Health Service for several years, Gareth joined Microsoft in 2002 to work with the UK NHS account team, then moved to run the Windows Server business in the UK, launching Windows Server 2008 and 2008 R2. Since December 2010, he has been at Microsoft headquarters in Seattle and currently has responsibility for driving mobility and health globally as part of the worldwide health team. Sherry Oswald is a MEC facilitator and applications trainer at Brainstorm Inc. Sherry has over 16 years of training experience in the areas of leadership, team building, and personal development, in addition to computer software and operating systems. Ms. Oswald has delivered training for large corporations all over the United States, as well as individuals and small businesses. Her philosophy in training is that it's her job to make her students' job easier and enjoys helping, helping them find more efficient ways to perform their daily tasks. Sherry's expertise in the applications she teaches makes her an excellent resource as a subject matter expert, which frequently leads to consulting engagements. She specializes in Microsoft SharePoint technologies and data-driven applications such as Microsoft Access, Microsoft SQL Server, and Crystal Reports. It is now my pleasure to turn the floor over to Gareth to begin today's presentation. Thank you, Terry. Good afternoon. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm aware my accent doesn't sound like I'm based in Seattle, but uh, but I am I'm in Microsoft's headquarters. Um, I, I'm talking to you today from a unsurprisingly grey and slightly rainy day in Seattle. Uh, we we wanted to spend the next, I guess, 45 minutes, maybe a slightly different agenda to a normal kind of corporate conversation. We wanted to to set the scene and talk about what we've seen working, mainly by talking about real customer stories um, around clinical mobility, around uh, collaboration and productivity, and, and how you get to that final point of physicians and nurses being able to actually do their job more efficiently, not having to do their job when they get home at night. Um, technology should be enable, enabling clinicians to become more efficient, not less efficient. So I'm kind of going to set the scene, and then I'm going to hand over to Sherry, who is going to spend no time in PowerPoint, she's going to spend time showing you a real use case of kind of what it looks like when you implement technologies, many of which you already own, when you implement them together in, a, in an interesting and useful way in healthcare. Uh, and she's going to take you through a scenario that shows you how this stuff works together and that hopefully will challenge you to think about the way you use stuff that you've probably already bought and use it in a slightly different way. So I'm going to, it'll probably be 15 minutes scene setting for me, maybe 20 minutes, and then I'm going to hand over to Sherry to show you a, to show you things that, that are more interesting to look at the PowerPoint. So we do know that the world has changed though. Um, we know when we talk to customers and partners, we, we, so we have, I don't know, five or six uh, very senior, large, worldwide healthcare customers come to Redmond each week to have what we call executive briefing centers, and we, we run sessions with those guys where they, they help educate us and we help educate them uh, around how technology works. And one of the things that everything, every single customer talks to us about in healthcare is how do you deal with the increasing demands uh, and legit, legitimate demands from particularly clinicians and nurses uh, or physicians and nurses in their in their user base. So when a doctor buys a shiny new device at the weekend from the store, walks in on a Monday morning and says, uh, make this work with my clinical system, please. I need it to be more productive. Or when a, a new application is purchased across an organization for a departmental function and it very clearly helps helps improve a mobile workflow, uh, how do you how do you enable that world to work? So you can see that that generically we know that um, 
a huge proportion of employees are now using personal devices for work. When we ask healthcare customers, it's normally uh, one of two models. Healthcare customers, and particularly IT, let their users do either email and calendaring, or in some cases, in a smaller number of cases, they let them do email calendaring and access to some of their key clinical systems. Um, and it varies across the organizations. We also know, particularly in healthcare, that nothing is simple. We know that the doctors work across sites, that in the US in particular, mergers and acquisitions are happening every day. Users, clinicians, nurses and doctors are having to navigate complicated different organizational systems, different IT systems on different sites. There's got to be a better way of IT helping make that simpler. And from an IT point of view, uh, the traditional model of designing the way that applications are sold, including from Microsoft, traditionally scales up or gets more expensive with the more users that you have attached to your network. And again, I won't delve into this in, in details, but just from a Microsoft point of view, we, we understand that, we understand the world's changing, and we are moving to enable customers to license their solutions from us so that it supports multiple devices and multiple and mobility in a much more cost-effective way. And then I always kind of start any mobility and health session with this, and I think this is a this is a really um, honest approach to looking at this. There are a huge number of healthcare devices being used out there um, that are consumer devices. They are great devices. They've got great battery life. They're lightweight. They're incredibly effective at delivering consumer applications, including health apps, um, and the, and they are being increasingly brought into healthcare in a bring your own device or actually being purchased corporately by healthcare in a, they're great in the home, how do we make them great at work? And it is entirely possible to do that. There is some effort and, um, and time and money needed to make a consumer grace and a consumer device an enterprise device, um, but it is time and effort. It has to merge somewhere, it has to complement the enterprise grade solutions. Healthcare IT is so significant and so um, important in driving privacy and ensuring that patient confidentiality is, is kept uh, to the standard it needs to be. We heard recently, uh, I'll have to find out where this came from, but that a, a personal health record is somewhere in the region of five times as valuable to the black market as a credit card number. Um, we know that IT does a great job in health of securing that, managing it, and keeping it safe. The really difficult thing, and, that, and up until recently it's been incredibly difficult, is how do you do that, that square in the middle where you have both devices and experiences that users love, as well as secured, managed, encrypted, and all that sort of important stuff that it has to be to be used effectively and safely in healthcare. So the way we look at it, we look at it really simply in, in Microsoft in our healthcare team. Um, we broadly look at mobility in three sections. We look at folks in hospital, so kind of acute care. We then look at health professionals in the ambulatory or community care sections. And then we look at citizens and patients. Um, and the, the really important learning that we've had over the last few years is there is no one perfect device for health. In some cases, an iPad might be a great device. In some cases, a Surface might be a great device. In some cases, it might need to be ruggedized and sanitizable and droppable. Um, there is no one perfect device across that, that whole spectrum. We, we particularly see that in the, in the provider community, so the clinicians either in the hospital or the community. So some people wanted to use phones, um, or we want to see some people wanting to use larger tablets for teaching and learning but no one wants to use just the same device. And for IT, the ability to have a portfolio of, I don't know, six devices, from small to big, slow to fast, cheap to expensive, um, for the right workflow enables you to meet that need, but also to keep the uh, costs of managing and securing them, so keep, keep that cost down. And before I get into some customer stories to kind of highlight the point and, and talk about what we're seeing in the real world and what works and what doesn't work, I just very deliberately wanted to highlight this. We're seeing a significant number of customers um, focusing on device security, and that's great, but we want to make a really clear point that actually it's, you need to be thinking about so much more than just device security. Encrypting a device is really important, absolutely. If you lose that device in the taxi and it's got patient data on it, you need to make sure it's encrypted, you need to make sure you can wipe it and all those sort of good things. But 
you need to think at all levels of the whole experience when you're deploying clinical mobility solutions, how do you secure end-to-end -end the whole solution? Whether that's where's your data in your data center, do you have the correct physical access controls for your data center? Are you, what do you do when you have uh, potentially clinicians downloading apps from app stores, installing them and trying to connect them to your clinical systems without you going through any approval system? Um, operating system, we would like to obviously talk about Windows being a secure operating system, but we're not going, we're not going to do any details on that today. Uh, devices, and making sure that they support the correct logon that you need. And then the most important and the most difficult is the trusted people thing. There are healthcare organizations in the US that, are, that employ hundreds of thousands of people. It's incredibly difficult and incredibly important to make sure that your process around those people are uh, up to date. What happens when an IT guy leaves the organization is his account immediately deactivated so that he can't go, come back in and, and, and get data when he shouldn't be able to or she shouldn't be able to. All of those processes and people are really, really important. Don't just assume a, an encrypted device means you're secure. So let's talk a little bit about stories from around the world and then some more US stories in a minute around where we're seeing success in mobility, success in collaboration, um, and, then so, and then we'll hand over to Sherry to show you what this could look like in your organization. Um, so we're seeing an inc increasing trend of, in the world of, of mobile productivity in the, in the clinical workspace. So we're seeing a, a number of people moving away from pilots. Uh, we, always, we always say that the uh, <laughs> the health service has got more pilots than most airlines. Um, we are seeing a significant increase in scale deployments of real devices for real workflows. So for example, Palmetto Health um, did a really interesting thing. We actually didn't know anything about these guys. They went and bought a bunch of Surface Pros from uh, Best Buy, um, used them, uh, got them onto their approved procurement list. The, the physicians could buy them as part of their uh, continuing professional development monies, and they used them to access their existing clinical system, which is Cerna. So they use instead of, I mean, they supplement nurse workstations, they supplement all the other devices and, and kind of computers on wheels that are floating around wards today, and they enable the clinicians to become. Um, much more uh, collaborative, much more um, effective, much more productive because they've got a mobile device that lets them do all of their job. So whether that's a mobile uh, workflow or whether that's dropping it to a docking station and using a keyboard and a mouse and getting the rest of their job done, it's a really powerful use case that we're starting to see. Um, the next really interesting thing is New York Presbyterian, and this is a, Maybe maybe we get some questions about this at the end. We're seeing a significant trend in organizations thinking about doing patient devices differently. So, and we see that in two broad sections. We see the thing like New York Presbyterian um, now gives a tablet, it's actually a, a Lenovo tablet, um, to all, all the acute beds. Um, that lets the, the patients in the acute beds do a few things. It lets them do pain, pain reporting, um, it lets them do Skype, it lets them do nurse call, and it's a really simple, really effective way of delivering some patient engagement at a relatively low cost that also gives them a platform that they can extend on. So they're now looking at how do we start to extend clinical system access to that. So if the, if the doctor or nurse is there and there aren't any spare devices around, could they, could they grab that tablet, log in, and securely access the patient system? Could they extend that patient experience to a more comprehensive experience, including TV and internet browsing? Once they bought and built the platform, they're into a place where they can start to extend that platform. So a really strategic piece of work for New York Presbyterian. The other area we're seeing in the world of um, patient um, Patient engagement is, a, is very new for us, and we, we'd, again, love to maybe talk to you guys about that in the, in the Q&A section at the end, where for folks with long-term illnesses or for chronic conditions like diabetes, they, after the first hospital discharge, because we all know everyone is incented to not have any more um, admissions if possible, they are giving devices away to patients that have a gamification app on that enables them to manage for in the diabetes, case of diabetes, insulin, diet and exercise and encourages them to drive their behavior to improve their own condition 
and report exceptions back to their organization to the healthcare provider so that if things do need to be if it does need to be an intervention then the healthcare provider is getting advanced notice of that rather than only finding out on admission that's a massive and interesting new clinical productivity and patient engagement uh, story we're starting to see happening more and more places i won't talk about the final one because we've got lots lots of other stories to talk about um, We'll send you a link to this story. This, this, that's the title of this presentation. This is about how do you get work done? How do you get time back in your life to either do better or more clinical work or to spend time with your family, for example? So, so Dr. Keith, to, we've got a three-minute video from this guy about a, a, a physician in Marin County in um, California who basically is now using a mobile device in as part of his workflows rather than being a, um, a supplemental computer that he has to use after he's done all his consultations. And so the, the performance and, and the time and, and productivity improvement that he's seeing means he's actually getting all of his charting done rather than the fifth of his chart done that he has to do at the night. And he, he literally, uh, we've met him a few times, he, he, he tells the stories around he is so much more productive during the day, he can without any guilt at all, go home and spend time with his family knowing that he's actually done his real day job during the day. And that's, that's a, when we talk to physicians, that's a hugely compelling story. On a similar, similar kind of um, story, so Landmark Hospitals in the US do a really interesting story, they do a really interesting use case where they're deploying devices to, for their EHR. Uh, so their clinical system that, that, they, uh, that they use, they are deploying across mobile devices. Again, a little bit like the, the story I talked about, uh, Palmetto Health earlier. Take your existing clinical systems, take your existing infrastructure, plug in some great clinical grade de mobile devices, connect them into office and, con and communications, all of your clinical systems as well as your um, communication and collaboration systems, and very quickly, be ready to go, in a, often in a browser-based uh, uh, scenario, and very quickly enable clinical productivity so that, again, charting gets done, reporting gets done, and clinicians can go home and not, having, not have to work in the evening. One of the things we have also learned is obviously great devices are important, but what you do with those devices is even more important, and that kind of falls into a couple of areas. We, there's what we call the line of business app, so that's how do users use their uh, Cerno or Epic or Allscripts or whatever clinical system you use in your organization, your, your main EHR and EMRs, how do you use those solutions to, to be more effective on a mobile device? But actually, there is so much collaboration and there is so much um, communication happening in health, either uh, analog or digitally, that, that once you give someone a mobile device that is connected to that communication infrastructure and that collaboration infrastructure, you can really start to improve productivity. And, um, and when I finish in a couple of minutes, you're going to start to see how some of that stuff really works with, with solutions that, that, that exist. So we've got um, Dr. Cody Mihalas uh, delivers real quantified benefits. Now they're only a small site, um, and, but I chose these guys because their story is, is really nice because it's quantified. So they are, they are using uh, online collaboration through a product we have called, used to be called Link, it's now called Skype for Business, which is kind of corporate, securely managed uh, enterprise instant messenger voice and video. Um, and they are delivering, the, they are removing the latency from the health communication solution. So health is great at communicating with each other and the employees are really good at it. There's always some, the trouble is there's always some latest latency in between the, between the communications. Once you have presence information and secure messaging, you can remove that latency. And again, I'm very deliberately going to kind of keep driving this, this kind of the, the same sort of stories because we are seeing a real pattern emerging of people who are using digital technologies to securely manage co and collaborate across, usually often the cloud, uh, to access either each other so that they can communicate like these guys do, or access documents because we know uh, discharge notes and protocols and communications and and a huge amount of the work that you guys are you doing doesn't necessarily always live in your clinical system. It lives in other parts of your infrastructure. Having an ability to access those on a mobile device from wherever you are, whether that's home or a remote care clinic or a nursing site, um, or in this case, in this case, in in uh, in this this customer where they are 
absolutely enabling and opening up that access across we're using link for communication and SharePoint for document management and security there's a real opportunity to enable people to see the information they, they care about and they need to see and then the, these guys are close to my heart so when I used to work for the National Health Service in the UK uh, West Midlands Ambulance Service was part of my my world I used to work with guys but they're always very technologically forward-looking but they use again link which we now call Skype for business for that online connection that online presence that ability to see to have uh, vehicle to base communications over a, a encrypted HIPAA compliant secure network um, and make sure that the that the physicians nurses paramedics all of the folks that are involved in in a very large complicated ambulance service have the ability to communicate and again not necessarily reduce latency because there's not a lot of latency in our system but to certainly make it more efficient to remove the chance of unapproved unsecure communication technologies being used but to use it in a easy or relatively easy to use world so that it's familiar to the users and it's not a huge amount of training and again we'll share all of these case studies and these stories because there's a bunch of learnings that we've all had and they've had in doing these technologies so I'm going to I'm going to sum up by saying you in in the world of health it is critical that, that everybody looks and thinks about this concept of clinical grade devices but most importantly you looks about what they're going to use a clinical grade device for whether that's access to an EHR a clinical system over a browser or Citrix which is what most of these systems are, are delivered in healthcare particularly in the US and all obviously these connecting a modern clinical grade device straight into that network is a relatively simple thing to do the second half is how do you then use those devices for, for productivity, communication, collaboration, and making sure that all of the health team and the virtual health team are connected and are talking to, to each other and, and talking together and delivering real benefits for patient care. And with that, I shall hand over. I'm going to wait to see. There we go. That's changed over. I shall go on mute and I'll hand over to Sherry. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Sherry Oswald, and I'm with Brainstorm, and we are an end-user adoption specialist company. We are a training company out of Salt Lake City area in Utah, and um, my passion is making your job easier. You have um, a lot of a lot to get done in your day, and not always a lot of time to do it. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you, so I can give you some ideas of how you can um, how you can actually work with the devices that they were just talking about and have you get out of your job, get, get home, get your stuff done earlier, and maybe even get some stuff done before you get into the office. All right, so um, typical you day, uh, a day in the life, right? You get into work and you're working on your email, but let me give you, kind of take you out of that box and give you some other ideas. You have um, email available to you. So everything I'm gonna show you here is available in Office 365. It's all happening in the cloud. So as far as mobility goes, um, being able to access your content anywhere, any device, any time can be huge when you're trying to make every moment of every day productive. Now, some of you may have some long commutes in the morning, and you may have a um, you know time on your hands where you can actually triage some of this stuff before you actually get into your office. Now, I'm one of those people that I kind of roll over in the morning and you know look at my phone because that's my my. Um, alarm and kind of get my day started before I actually even get out of bed, which sometimes may be not a good thing. All right, um, so for example, your email here. I have um, my little character here today is Amy, and she works for a healthcare clinic. I've been working back and forth with a doctor. Um, his name is Alan Steiner, and um, he, I've, I've asked him for an x-ray, and I've been kind of working with him on working um, with this particular patient that had a very significant leg injury, and now I need to kind of get through my day and look at maybe he's responded to me, other things that have come into my inbox. Now, keep in mind, this is any where, any device, any time. If you have internet access on any device, you can get to this. Um, that includes, of course, the micro, your, your phones. It could be, of course, a Windows phone, um, an iOS, or a Android device. You could also have this on a kind of tablet system, so any Windows-based tablet. But also, you have um, on iPads. So anywhere, any device, anytime, there are apps for these. So your email, this is our typical inbox, right? 
imagine I'm actually on, on my way into work and I could be on my phone doing this, right? I can go ahead and triage my email before I even get there. So I'm going to just kind of glance through. Here it looks like Alan has responded to me regarding the x-ray that I requested from John Smith. Now notice um, if you don't have 2013 yet, I'm going to show you a couple of cool little things that have shown up here. Um, action items here, under action items, this actually pre-reads your email and says, hey, there's something you might need to do here that, um, be, you know, instead of reading through an entire email to figure out the very last line is, hey, can you look at this? It actually pre-reads my email and looks for certain verbiage and flags it and says, hey, I think you've got an action item here. And it shows me the verbiage. Please feel free to look it over. Notice here it says in the email, please feel free to look it over. And it's showing me that I have um, a, t a task I need to get done. And I can automatically flag that. Again, any device, anywhere, anytime. So I'm going to flag that one. Now I've got some other ones here. There's a health clinic. I'm going to follow up on that this week. Um, there's a donor banquet, and it's giving me a couple of things here. I've got Bing Maps, and I've also got action items. So because it included somewhere in this email message, you'll notice that there is a um, address in here. It flags me with Bing Maps saying, hey, you've got an, an address. Do you want to know where that is? And it actually connects to the web, gives me that address, and shows me where that is. And I can actually get directions. So again, any device. Anywhere I have the directions to wherever this meeting might be. And I also may have some action items, and I can flag that as well. Now, one of my favorite things about these, I don't know about you guys, but I have people that ask me all the time, and they say, hey, you know, can, you, can we meet next Tuesday at 4 o'clock? Outlook is smart enough now to know what next Tuesday means, and um, will, one of the little flags that pops up here will say next Tuesday at 4. Um, it'll flag it for schedule event and give you the prompt for that date. Very, very cool. All right, so I have a, um, a Alan here that I need to talk to. I've got a lot going on with him. And notice his, his um, little status bar here. That's called the presence indicator. And it's telling me he's currently not available. But let's say I want to talk to him as soon as possible. Anywhere you see this little presence label, it could be in um, an email, it could be in a SharePoint site, it could be on a document, it could be anywhere. You're going to see this little presence bubble letting you know if he's available or not. And I have immediate access to him to contact him via um, the integration with Link or what is now Skype for Business. Um, so in my image right now, it's Link. They have upgraded everything to Skype for Business. So we'll, whichever one I say, understand I'm talking about the same thing. Um, I can chat with him. I can call him. So any device even if it's my computer, a headset, that becomes my communication device, and I can actually call him from there. And again, um, your tablets all work the same way. Um, I can start a video call. I can email. But here's my favorite feature. I need to get a hold of him as soon as possible. I have all of this information about him, but my favorite little button in here is under the ellipsis, this little dot, 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 that says tag for status change alerts, what I call stalker mode. So what this means, as soon as Alan becomes available, I'm going to be able to chat with him, talk to him about this patient, John Smith, that we've been working on. All right. I could go a little bit more through my emails, and I use categories to kind of flag my stuff to let me know um, when um, the things that I need to get done. So I use categories such as this is a Lunch and Learn series, which is a presentation. And then I have a webinar that I need to do, which again is another presentation. So I flag all of my emails, and then I switch to my view over here when I get so like, let's say I do this all while I'm on my um, commute into work, and now I'm into work, I need to see what I need to get done that day. I'm going to go ahead and change this to, instead of looking at it in date view, I'm going to change it to category view. And here's all the presentations I need to get done. And if I had gone through my entire email box, which I'm not going to make you guys sit through, um, I would have all of these other categories. So if I had presentations or consultations, things like that, I can even flag them from here. So I'm going to categorize this one as a consultation. And here are my consultations I need to do. Here are the presentations I have to get done. And I flag them for due dates. So start date and due date. So if I'd rather, I can look at it things I need to get done this week, things I need to get done today, things I need to get done next week. So 
Kind of use that to triage your email box before you ever get into work if you can, or quickly if you, once you get to work, it's kind of a time management thing. You can go in and say, hey, you know, this is the stuff I need to get done. All right, so remember I flagged um, Alan for a um, consult. I need to get a hold of him as soon as he gets online. I actually have Alan queued up on another tablet over here. So I'm going to change his status as available. And you'll notice right away, it, he turns green and I get this little box telling me, hey, he's available. I'm going to go ahead and start an IM with him. And um, he um, may or may not respond depending on if he's available, but he is. So I'm going to go ahead and say, good morning, Alan. I guess we're at afternoon now, right? Good, good afternoon. And see if he responds. So as Alan, I'm getting um, a request and he responds to me. So now I need to um, con consult with him on this patient. So about John Smith. I notice he sent me a link here um, for his x-ray for John Smith. And maybe I want to look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that here. This is going to OneNote online. So OneNote, if you haven't used it, it's like an like um, electronic notebook system that you can use to create notebooks for anything and everything. It may be you may have one notebook per patient. You may have one patient consult notebook like he has with a tab for each one. This is the online version. So available anywhere, any device, any browser, anytime. I can see this content and actually look at it. So Alan has shared with me, through secure means, of course, um, the x-rays for our patient. This is pre-op and this is post-op. So they did a, quite a bit of work on him and put a, a fixator on his leg. And maybe we need to talk about that. So I'm going to go ahead and open this in OneNote. So I'm in the online version, but if I have the ability, I can open this in OneNote. And this is Alan's actual notebook that he's added for me. Now, if you can imagine, we, you know, we're kind of um, consulting. I, I don't, I can't uh, uh, simulate a conversation, a verbal conversation, but imagine we've now escalated to a verbal conversation and we now need to consult on this x-ray. Nobody had to go anywhere. All we have to do is um, take this x-ray. I'm going to go ahead and copy this right here. Go back to my link conversation with Alan and I'm going to share some content with him. So notice I can share my monitor, I can share a program, I can share a PowerPoint, but to consult with him, I'm going to use the whiteboard. So adding the whiteboard here, and Alan's going to get a notification over here that I am trying to share a whiteboard with him. I'm just going to paste that picture into, oh, it won't let me put it in there. Let me put it in the other way. I and um, it won't let me paste from here, but I'm going to insert the picture from my desktop because I had saved it there. So here's that picture of his x-ray. So I have a um, pre-op, the post-op x-ray that I need to ask him about. And now we're working in consultation mode. I can manipulate this picture, make it a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, zoom in, zoom out. And maybe there's some areas that I have some concern about. So I can highlight it here, highlight this area, say this is something wrong. And I'm no, I'm no doctor, believe me. I'm just um, trying to show you some of the capability. If you want to mark this up, you can click um, an arrow stamp, click this here. You also have areas for an X stamp. So maybe we have a question about this right here. Um, this whole thing is happening online, and we are consulting. Now, maybe Alan has a question, so I'm going to mark his with a little check mark over here, that this area is good, and this area is good. And notice that his marks are showing up real time for me. And I, um, we're in live mode, talking about our patient, and trying to figure out the best way to take care of him. All right. Now, the other things you can do, I mean, this could be multiple people. Obviously, I can only simulate, you know, two people at a time. But there you can have up to 200 people on this if you want that many cooks in the kitchen. Um, 
but you can do polls, you can do question and answer sessions, you can do a PowerPoint presentation um, or a specific program. So if you're sharing your screen and you need to share your EHR screen, this is a perfect way to be able to do that. Um, PowerPoint, the, the difference between PowerPoint as an application and PowerPoint as a program um, is when you display a PowerPoint as a PowerPoint presentation, you see the presenter view and your audience sees the audience view. So they don't, you get the benefit of your speaker notes and all of the, um, the items that help you be a little more efficient in your presentation. And um, PowerPoint um, actually in 2013 gives you a next slide preview, which I personally love because I tend to talk ahead of myself. Um, in OneNote, you can also share your OneNote notes or share the attachments. Okay. So if I wanted to, let's say I want to um, save this off because we've used, we've created, maybe we've created some whiteboards, some additional whiteboards with notes. Um, if you're in a, a physical room, you, somebody would, would normally go up and take a picture of that and save it somewhere. But then maybe that one person has that picture. Where do you keep all that information so that everybody involved in this case going forward might need this? You know, Alan, this um, John Smith may be having some issues for years to come, and your clinicians may change over in that period of time. So wouldn't it be nice to know where all that information is being stored? Let's save that off in OneNote. So here is our whiteboard session. I could draw on here. You can you can write. I'm not a real good writer with a mouse, but you know here I can put in text, right? So anything you want to you can normally do in a, in a um, hard whiteboard in a in a physical whiteboard. You can actually do in the electronic whiteboard as well. So I'm going to save this off. Send to OneNote. And OneNote's going to blink at me here because it's like you've got a few notebooks here. Where else, you know, where do you want me to put this? Now, I may have a lot of notebooks. So I'm just going to search for John Smith. And notice at the top, I get recent picks and in the title, John Smith. So it actually searches across all of my notebooks. And if I want to save it in the one that Alan shared with me versus my own, which is the patient consult one, then I would save that in his notebook and click OK. And let's say this is our consult. All right. Now, I can um, now I have this for reference going forward, and we have this saved off into um, an accessible place for anyone that is working on this case, any device, anywhere, anytime. All right. Um, other things you can do with OneNote. I'm just going to go ahead and um, click the File tab here, oops, um, the Home tab, and I'm going to pin this open. This is probably one of my favorite features um, in OneNote, is to be able to add content other than just pictures and notes. You have the ability to insert um, things from file printouts, file attachments, spreadsheets, um, diagrams, screen clippings. You can even put in audio recording. So if I wanted to record an audio, um, let's say I add a page, I add one here, it's like, let's say um, this is my notes for transcription. And I insert an audio recording. It starts recording. I have the ability to stop, play, uh, anything I would do with a normal recorder, right? And it has now saved this in here, in the cloud, in a safe place. I used to work for a chiropractic office, and he used to use an old transcriber um, with the tape in it, and he'd get halfway through his notes and the tape would break. Um, this is saved, and it's it attached to his patient record, but also this um, file can now be saved as, so save as, and it is a, a WMA file, so if you have a transcription service that can use this or somebody else that would benefit from that, I could save this off or email it to somebody or post it where, you know, even maybe they do the transcription right from this notebook. You know, um, so it saves that file with the patient file as well. Okay, so that can be done, again, anywhere, any device. The um, other things I like about OneNote, um, to be able to consult with others is you can actually create your own page templates. 
Um, so if you have one for SOAP notes, for example, you could put that in there. For consultation notes, you can create your own page templates. For example, here's a formal meeting notes one that's already in here. You can set those up. So when, when you are working with your patients, you already ha insert a page, you type in your notes, and everything, the structure is already there. You don't have to start from scratch. All right. Um, you can draw things, obviously, and um, it actually, if you have a tablet, that you can write with, so it's touch enabled. And um, I have a Surface. I love my Surface, and I actually write my notes in here. So if I were to again doing this with the mouse, not with my Surface, ah, not very good at it. But it also has an ink to text option, so it converts. If you don't write, and I, and I usually joke about this, you don't write like a doctor. Um, um, but we all know that doctors, you know, I think it's from going to school and scribbling notes frantically for their um, school, all those years in school that we don't know, can't always read their writing. Uh, can you tell I've done transcriptions for doctors as well? Um, you have, I can uh, convert that to text if it's written fairly clearly. And you saw I did that with a mouse, and it really wasn't that great. All right. So we have, um, beyond that, you have the ability to save this information. Let's say you have a SharePoint site, like our Contoso home site, um, and you can share those notebooks in any of your SharePoint sites or in OneDrive, which is your online secured um, patient or file storage. So you have up to a terabyte of storage now um, for each of your end users. And again, available anywhere, any device, anytime. So hopefully that gives you some ideas between Outlook, um, between working with your uh, communicator, using being able to um, collaborate and work with people, and also to be able to use OneNote to save that information where everybody can view it and access it, and it's there for um, records. I'm going to go ahead and stop presenting here. And one of the, if you've ever worked, um, done an audio um, presentation, and you have to leave, maybe you're the one that started it. I'm going to click here. See, it says need to leave. Don't worry. The meeting will continue for whoever's still there. So even if you have to ditch out, that conversation still goes on whether you're there or not. It doesn't crash and burn just because the person who started it disappeared. Okay. So all right. I'm going to go ahead and hand that back over to Becker to close this out, and we're happy to answer your questions. Again, I'm Sherry Oswald, and I'm with Brainstorm, and if we can make your life easier, just let us know. Thank you so much, and I'm um, passing it off to you. Thank you, Gareth and Sherry, for a very, very informative and enjoyable presentation. We will now begin the Q&A portion of the program. As a reminder, you could submit any questions you have by typing them into your control panel in the space labeled Enter a Question for Staff and clicking Send. Our presenters will attempt to answer as many questions as they can during the time we have for Q&A, and will follow up on questions they do not have the opportunity to address. Looks like the first question we have here how does mobility integrate with EHR, and what CEHRT are more viable, and what practical application issues arise? Sounds like a question for me. Um, I, you know, I think I think there is so much depth behind that question. Um, I, I, we we kind of think of what we've seen happening. I think is kind of two phases, maybe three phases of mobility. Fifteen years of everyone trying to do stuff and then failing. Um, because devices just weren't good enough. And then in the last few years, the next phase, which was the consumer grade tablets um, with actually some pretty good apps from some of the, the key EHR vendors um, that do some of the workflows that the folk, that, that clinicians are using. And I think it's, it's interesting to see what, what we discovered is every time you ask someone what they're using, for their mobility solution, they say we're using an iPad or an Android device, and it works really well. And um, what we often find is they also have to carry a laptop, or they have to use a computer on wheels, or a or a Ward PC, or whatever they're going to use, because the the mobile consumer mobile device lets them do, in a really good, easy way, a small proportion of their job, whether that's I don't know admissions or checklists or discharge or whatever. <coughs> oh, excuse me depending on what apps the vendor has built, but they often have to drop into their full clinical system for a bunch of their work. What we're seeing is that's leading to this new sort of phase three that says, um, actually, mobile devices that let you do that great touch experience for, for what is a sensible mobile workflow, um, again, discharge notes or 
uh, check forms or, or kind of the things that fit in, in a tablet environment really well. But the same machine can also be your desktop or your laptop, particularly as wireless technology is starting to come in. So as a, as a physician walks into a consultation ward, they can, they can drop, put their machine down, connect over wireless to a screen, a keyboard and a mouse and do the depth piece of work that they have to do when they need it is beginning to be pretty compelling actually. So um, all of the vendors, uh, all of the big EMRs obviously all work on Windows. Many of them already have apps on iPad and Android. Um, our advice would be have a look at the right device for the right workflow. Have a really big think about whether um, the clinical systems you've got, whether that's Epic or Cerner or Allscripts or whoever, um, what's the roles you want to do with mobility and is there value in that mobile device also being able to deliver the non-mobile experience so uh, writing a report or doing a doing driving some of the extra work that these folks have to do as well as just um, connecting through some of the simpler workflows on a mobile app so I guess the short answer is um, mobility integrates really well but have a really think about um, have a really good think about which is the right workflows and work out and confirm whether um, whether there is a clever way of using a device for both mobile and non-mobile workflows rather than having to carry two things around. I hope that made sense. Um, Great, thank you, Gareth. Uh, next question here: Care management work crosses multiple entities and systems. What would you suggest for portable for a portable device, Surface Pro or iPad? considering their work involves reporting as well. <laughs> um, so it's hard, I work for Microsoft, it's hard for me not to just say, oh, buy a Surface. Um, but actually, I, we, we, we fully recognize there are a bunch of iPads out in health uh, and they're, they're doing some really useful things. And we, we have some solutions and some partners and stuff, both from Microsoft and our partners that will help you make those iPads a bit more secure, a bit more manageable so that they can become a little bit more clinical grade. And as Sherry talked about earlier, deliver the office experience securely to those devices as well. So, so we fully recognize there are a bunch of non-Microsoft devices out there in health, um, and we, we're keen to help make them as relevant and as secure as possible. I guess the, the interesting thing is, it, it, I'm not sure what you quite mean by reporting, whether that means kind of patient uh, reporting, whether that means reporting on um, activity, or whether that means kind of business reporting of performance and, and um, uh, admissions and readmissions, we we tend to see that the majority of people would like to have a machine that could do everything, and we uh, and the surfaces does answer some of those questions. The surface is a really strong, powerful machine that lets, but it's more of a laptop replacement than a tablet. What we're seeing in health is uh, a bunch of physicians are buying Surface Pros because they are incredibly powerful for that role. But we're also seeing, um, particularly in the world of nursing, them buying some other devices, things like that. So Dell and HP now both make devices for healthcare that run Windows, the same as the Surface Pro, um, but they deliver either cleanability or droppability or a barcode reader or one of some of those other things that healthcare requires and needs for it for its basis. Um, so I, I guess I'll sum up with, there is absolutely a place for Android and iPad in health. Give us a shout if you'd like to help understand how to make them a bit more secure and a bit more manageable. But we are starting to see an increasing trend of, of kind of real clinical grade devices, whether that's Surface Pro for doctors, um, whether that's uh, Dell or HP or some of the other vendors that are making real um, clinically relevant, wipeable, sanitizable, droppable devices for, for other workflows. Um, and you're right, multiple entities and systems is really hard, but if you've done your infrastructure well, you can. we have this concept of federation where if you, if you have three organizations working together, they can federate their infrastructure together, which means that users can connect with a Windows device in any of those three organizations and share records, subject to obviously all the security and permissions, but, but the infrastructure can support you in doing it, you just need to make sure it's set up correctly. Thank you. Next question. Can the collaboration session be tied to billing, transaction, record input to billing system for rating and, and invoicing? And how does the patient EMR get updated? Sherry, do you want me to try and answer that? It's sort of halfway between the two of us, I think. Oh, I guess she's coming off mute. Three, two, one. Right, I'll have a go. Um, so one of the really... 
Oh, oh hi, so, sorry, Sherry. Sorry, go ahead. Um, I, it would, my answer would be it depends on the system. So each yep. one of them is different, and that would be the only input I would have to give on that. Yeah, no, I'd agree. I think that the, one of the really important things to recognize, though, and, and again, this isn't something that happens on day one of an installation of a solution like this, or you on the day you set up Office 365 or whatever. But remember that this stuff is all, and we won't go into details now, but is all programmable. So one of the reasons that you might want to use Link or Skype for Business, for example, for this collaboration session is you can code against that service. So there is an opportunity to think about when a when an event happens in Link with a consultation between three physicians in a, in a complicated case or a case management issue, there is an opportunity to code and record that it's that um, interaction and put it into a system and then plug it into billings, but it, that is going to be work that needs to be done. It is absolutely possible, um, but yeah, a lot of people don't really think about that and don't really, they kind of have it, it completely separated, but I think it's a, it's a very interesting question because it's, it's the right question to ask and it is absolutely possible, but you need to think a little bit about how you want to do it because not only does everyone have different clinical systems and different billing systems, the way that they are implemented in each customer is also often slightly different. So some local work would need to be done by one of your trusted partners in delivering that. Great, thank you. Next question. How can I learn more about using the technology discussed to improve team collaboration? Um, I think so. What we will um, do is make. Well, oh, sorry. Go for it. That's ex well. If if you're interested, in brainstorm. We're, that's exactly what we do. So if you'd exactly. like uh, to work with us, we'd be happy to help you with that. Um, it's brainstorminc.com. Um, brainstorminc.com. And um, feel free. Uh, we're going to post our email addresses, I believe, at the end. So feel free to email me, and we'll get you to the right person. Happy to help you with that. Um, there's a lot of resources out there, and uh, we have some really great on-demand resources that people can use if they have questions as well. Uh, this, you know, just as an aside, we're getting loads of questions in, which is a really good sign. Thank you, everybody, for, for the questions. Fantastic. Here's another one coming in here. Uh, what has been the feedback from people who have been using these devices and tools? I can tell you that my brother actually works for a hospital in um, Idaho, and they rolled out to all their physicians their Surface Threes, and they had come up from some other tablets um, that were not um, didn't have an operating system. So they I don't want to you know, put any other <laughs> devices down, but they absolutely love it because it has they're light, they're they are able to um, transport them from room to room rather than taking a heavy laptop. They can write on them instead of having to type everything in because sometimes they just need to scribble quick notes. And the adoption has been amazing. The doctors just love them. And that's and not just the doctors, but the, um, the nurses as well. So, But the doctors are raving. They did a little focus group. Yeah, I, I, that, that would so I spend a lot of my time talking to customers who are using um, mobile devices in new and interesting ways in healthcare around the world. I, I'd echo that. I think there's there is definitely finally in the last year we can confidently look people in the eye and say, "Yep, your IT is good and you've been doing IT well, um, but you can now plug in devices that a are that keep IT happy, but more importantly, actually clinicians like using." And I'll just tell you maybe a, a quick little story because I think it's it's an interesting indicator of how to make these these projects work really well. So we have an on-site health clinic in Microsoft that is um, for the, in in Seattle. With, for, we've got th tens of thousands of employees, so we have a healthcare site. It's run by a third-party company that runs lots of employee healthcare organisations. So it's not a Microsoft site. We contract with them to run it. Uh, it's kind of I don't know ten providers. It's a great facility. We upgraded them all from old laptops to Surface Pro 3s uh, six months ago. The single biggest success reason that they now love their devices is because we let them choose the color of their keyboard. And it was a really interesting learning for all of us. We gave them, because it felt like they were involved and they cared about the device and they were being consulted and they had some choices and some preferences, it was dramatic to see how their emotions went from, this is a thing that IT is doing to us, to, oh, this is cool, this is interesting. And we now, even the most reticent physicians on the site, and there were a few, 
um, now are much more engaged, are using pen. I show shows they with the, using the pen, they're using it in tablet mode on their lap for consultation, so there isn't a screen between them and the patient. Really interesting psychological uh, success criteria around making sure that people are involved and care about. If you try and force physicians to use devices, in general, they'll just ignore you. Um, you really want them on your side. You really want to, to take advantage of their, um, their passion and their ability to make things better. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question here. I'm working with a vendor that keeps attempting to show work using Dropbox, but our security does not allow Dropbox. I was wondering if we could view and collaborate using OneNote being co-located. Do you know of cases where this is happening? Absolutely. The, um, the ability to use Office 365 um, and the OneDrive capability, um, OneDrive has a terabyte of storage and it has the same, um, and it actually I'd say more accessibility than Dropbox. Um, the ability to save those and share and they're, it's subject to security. So you can make them sign in with a Microsoft um, uh, account, so it's, it doesn't have to be a Hotmail, Live, you know, Outlook account. It can be any account that's registered and confirmed by Microsoft, and they can collaborate with you, share, and again, view on any device. So, for instance, the OneNote, being able to view it on an iPad, all they had to do was authenticate and log in, and any files that you put in the folder, you can you secure it at the folder level, you can secure it at the file level, and um, be able to share and collaborate with those people. So, um, I would just, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go no, go ahead. I was going to say, one, I'm sure as, as Sherry talks about storing things in the cloud, a, a bunch of people in the audience were starting to think about the whole uh, security and HIPAA um, conversation. We absolutely will sign a HIPAA business associates agreement for um, Office 365 in the cloud. We have a large, we don't make the number of a very large number of US customers in healthcare who are using Office 365 for scenarios very much like this because as soon as you get this, as soon as you get this abstracted out of your organization and hosted in the cloud in a secure HIPAA compliant way, you then have a bunch of interesting options around sharing and controlling sharing that you don't have when you own the infrastructure to do it locally. Great, thank you. It looks like we have time for uh, one more question here. Uh, how much additional interest are you seeing in these solutions? I'll do one minute and then maybe Sherry, obviously you're at, you're at the, uh, the sharp end of this, so I think, look, I'd love to get your view on this. Um, I, we don't give numbers out, but from a mobile solution point of view in healthcare, our the number of tablets that we and mobile clinical devices that we are seeing being sold into health is increasing at an incredible rate. Um, we're seeing we, we, we now have more stories than we um, expected. We've got customer stories. We've got deployments in the in the multiple thousand units. Uh, we've got Belgian hospitals deploying three and a half thousand. We've got a bunch of UK. We've got folks in the US deploying multiple thousands. So on the mobility and device piece, we're really starting to see it um, pick up and, and start to drive forwards. Sherry, from your point of view, how's, how's, how's business in training people how to use this stuff, which is a real indicator of success? Oh, I guess she's coming off mute. We have an entire sales team now that's actually designated um, for the health industry. So we had it, because of the rise in EHR and the ability to have patient records available to the clinicians that need them, I, and that being able to get to those without having firewalls and having to do VPNs and you know fobs and all that, I think it has made a significant difference. And we have, like I said, we have an entire segment now um, dedicated to the healthcare industry. So when you you know, there's always been government, there's always been you know specific segments, but now that one is on a huge rise. Yeah. Wonderful. I want to again thank our presenters for their excellent presentation and for all of you for participating today. We look forward to having you join us for future webinars. This concludes today's program. Have a wonderful afternoon.